morning. I'm gonna start lying down. So I'm gonna take a uh, blanket or you could use two yoga blocks or you could use a pillow. I'm gonna use this blanket, it's a little less intense. So it kind of, I mean, it's a little softer version. So if you're feeling a little bit stiff or tight in your upper back and you wanna go for something a little bit softer, you could use a blanket or if you wanna go for something a little more intense, you could use yoga blocks or um, something, uh, you know, a little firmer kind of pillow. Anyway, I've got a rebel, relatively thin blanket. I folded it here now three times and then I'm gonna fold it again one more time into thirds. Okay, and then I'm gonna place that down on my mat so that I've got um, uh, a lot, it'll go under my whole back. So the nice thing about the blanket is when I lay down, oh, it's, I can kind of have it fairly low down my back. I like it about to the bottom of my ribs. And then you can adjust the head support by kind of creating a little wrinkle in your blanket. Okay, so this lets me open my chest up a little bit over the blanket so I get a little bit of release in these little muscles um, that want to hold my shoulder forward. So that's the first part that's kind of nice. And then the second part that's kind of nice um, is that I kind of um, gives me this little sense of a back bend. There's a bit, a little bit of a lift in the rib cage. And so I'm going to start with my legs all stretched out, but you can put your feet on the ground or even put your feet together like that. And that would work too. And then we'll just take some time to breathe here. As I'm breathing, I'm trying to expand my rib cage, get a little bit of movement going here. out for like another minute or so just kind of trying to get settled in mentally if you need to you can add like a little bit of movement with the legs or something like that to kind of get, get a little softer a little more of a release in the hips sometimes a little movement in the legs feels nice Three more breaths. So the only change I'm going to really make is I'm going to take this blanket out first and then coming back onto my back, I'm just going to notice where that landed me. Oh, oh. oh so I like the kind of impression left behind. 
um, the, when I use a blanket and it feels really nice to sort of oh, rock a little bit on that little space where the blanket used to be. So if that seems like a nice <laughs> idea to you, you can do that for sure. Make sure you've got enough room over the top of your head um, that you can extend your arms. So we're gonna do a little bit of work for the shoulders here. We're gonna take the arms and stretch them down, come all the way up. And as I'm coming up, I'm trying to stretch my arms just a little bit more each way, each, you know, all the way through this range of motion, bringing them out oh, and all the way back. Now, as far as your arms are allowed to lift, like if you've got some injuries or some tension in your shoulders, you can certainly stop before you get all the way to the floor with your thumbs. But just take whatever range of motion makes sense and is appropriate for you. If you need to reach the whole way. I find this really interesting. Like when I first started, there was just a little bit of tenderness in the shoulder, and now that is disappearing. So that's nice. <laughs> To just kind of notice what it's doing to you or for your shoulders may or may not be the same as mine all right so we're going to come right to the center we're going to bend the elbows grab one arm so i'm going to start with my left arm so i'm pulling my left arm across a little bit and then i'm trying to draw that shoulder blade back into my back maybe even to you know kind of feeling like it's trying to get onto the ground that shoulder blade There's just a little bit of resistance happening there with trying to pull the shoulder in two directions at once. So I'm gonna roll onto my side. I need something for my head, I'm gonna use this block. And then I just need to make sure I've got a range of motion that allows my arm to move without smacking into any furniture. Now, there's a kind of dicey place for the shoulder. There's all kinds of nerves that come out of the neck that go through this, there's a little channel right here between the collarbone, the shoulder blade, and the arm bone. Um, and so somewhere in this kind of uh, diagonal <laughs> area, so as I come over my head and get really close to about where the, sh the arm is level with the shoulder, down to about yeah, like 45 degrees, I'm not, you know, somewhere in that neighborhood, that place is a little bit tricky, right? Because there's an opportunity for us to pinch that little place closed. So you may wind up feeling like you need to hold your arm a little higher or you can pause there and just come straight back across, okay? So if doing a big circle doesn't make sense, choose a slightly different range of motion. Okay, so stretching through the arm and taking the arm all the way over to the point where it feels appropriate to go. Oh. And for me, sometimes it changes day to day. It might feel better some days go in one pattern and then other days I might want my arm a little higher in the air. Okay. So we're gonna do one more like that, and this is gonna turn us into a twist. So I'm gonna take this block out, I'm gonna reach this arm overhead, and as I come around the back, I'm gonna take oh, my upper back with me and onto the ground. Okay, so now you can wrap your legs around one another, you can stick a block in there, you can do whatever you need to to kind of adjust the hips so that there's a little stretch across the outer hip, but not too much. And then for me, I'm just gonna oh, turn my upper back just a little bit more onto the ground so that I can stretch out through this arm a little bit more. So I've got a little outer hip, a little bit of chest muscle stretch. You can turn your head in any direction that makes sense. I'm going for the same direction as my knees today. Let's do two more breaths here. And then I'm gonna bring my knees back to the center. So just peel in that top leg back and then the next one. Oh. And while we're here, you could do a little back massage. Oh. Or you could do um, some little windshield wipers if you don't want your feet up off the floor. Now we're gonna take the arms out into a T-shape. We're gonna do a little bit of oblique kind of warm up work. So we're gonna take the legs over to one side and then you can either curl the knees in 
straighten one leg out or straighten both legs out. We're gonna try to keep the shoulders nice and steady. Come to the middle, lift your hips. I think most of us have probably done this at least once before. So you can either curl the knees in, scissor the legs so one goes in each direction or bring both of them up kind of towards your hand. So just whatever works for your space and your low back. <laughs> Curling in and over. Curling in and over. So just back and forth about four more times. count. I'm on my last little set here. At least I think it is. <laughs> so once I've come all the way up and in, I'm going to just bring my legs back down. Now I'm going to need this yoga block. So I'm going to bring that over here. So I'm going to take hold of my right arm with my left hand, kind of drawing my right arm across my body. I'm going to try to oh, pull those right shoulder blade muscles all the way back down. And it, I'm trying to put my shoulder blade back onto my back the way it would be if I were in mountain pose, kind of trying to draw it into my back just a little bit. It might feel more like you're trying to touch the floor with it, and that's fine too. Whatever, <laughs> whatever uh, sensation uh, metaphor works best for you. So we're gonna take a couple more breaths here. Sometimes like a little lower feels a little nice or a little higher up, so you might move the arm bone just slightly as well. And then we're gonna roll all the way onto the side, going in the direction oh, that we're pulling in. So again, I just need to make sure <laughs> that I have a range of motion that's gonna allow my arm to move. And I do the first one really nice and slow, just sort of test the waters out and see, should I lift my arm a little higher today? What's gonna be the better range of motion? And then stretch into that range of motion so that you're reaching through. Again, this kind of little back area you can be a little kinder to yourself with. I don't know why I feel the need to add sound effects to that, but I do. Anyway, <laughs> I'm not sure if that's translating on the camera. <laughs> We're gonna do it one more time. And again, this one is gonna turn me into oh, a nice twist all the way down to the ground, oh, making adjustments so that the upper back has whatever, uh, you know, like I like both shoulder blades to be on the floor if I can help it. And then adjust the legs so that you like the way it is impacting your hips. Okay, let's take one more breath there. And we're just gonna bring the legs back. Oh, all right. So, you can give yourself a little back massage or some little windshield wiper moves, whichever you think is gonna <laughs> set you up a little bit better. Now, you're gonna bring your knees into your chest Okay, so depending on how badly you use your neck muscles, <laughs> you if you can curl your shoulders up off the mat and the neck is just being used to hold your head in place, great. But if for whatever reason you tend to overdo the neck muscles um, to try to get your you know, torso lifted, go ahead and put your hands behind your head. Let your head press back into your hands so that you can kind of practice this action of using the abdominals for their job rather than <laughs> the neck muscles for their job. And then you'll, you can just extend the legs and bring them back in, or you can extend the legs and the arms and bring them in. You can, of course, if you like, reach down. So you kind of sweep down towards the feet, okay? 
So we're gonna do as many of these <laughs> as makes sense, like about four more, maybe less on your end. Now, what I will suggest is that we're trying to hold the shoulders and the torso steady. If you need a little bit more work, see if you can curl in just a little bit tighter and hold that steady as you extend the arms and legs. So one more here. Beautiful. And you can put your head back down if you like. You can put your feet down. We're gonna take the legs through a kind of straight leg stretch scissory motion. So similar action with the upper body. We're gonna hold the upper body up. Again, you can leave your hands behind your head. So you've got the little neck muscles supported. And then the legs are gonna sweep back and forth. As we bring one leg in, the other leg reaches out. And then we're gonna curl in just a little bit more by trying to whoo, squeeze the abdominals just a little bit tighter. So be mindful of your hamstrings here. <laughs> So one leg comes closer, I can reach up a little higher towards that, try to maybe even grab the back of the leg, but be cautious that the hamstrings curl in just a little bit more. This leg is reaching out, this leg is in, and then I'm curling up. And again, you could leave your hands behind your head to add that little extra bit of support. It's not easy to do this and talk at the same time. So let's do a few more rounds. Reach through both legs. Two more sets. Now bringing both legs together, you can leave your hands back behind your head or put your head back down on the floor. We're gonna glue the legs together, heels together, toes separate. You can put your hands under your hips or just beside your hips for a little extra support, we're gonna to try to hold the low back totally steady as we lower the legs down for four, three, two, one. Hold there, draw in, two, one, and come back. Lower, <laughs> three, two, one. Hold, three, two, one. Come back. Lower, three, two, one, hold, three, two, one, come back, halfway, lower, three, two, one, hold, three, two, one, come back, Whew. lower, three, <laughs> two, one, hold, three, two, one, come back, last one, yogis. Lower, three, two, one, hold. Three, two, one, come back. You can bend the knees. Whew. So I like windshield wipers after that, but again, you could give yourself more of like a little back massage. Oh. So we're gonna take ourselves and just basically flip over so we can do a few rounds of Cobra. Get the upper back moving now. So sometimes it's helpful to uh, slide all the way off your mat <laughs> so you can roll back onto it. Oh, so hands go under the shoulders, reach out through the legs. We're gonna inhale and lift. And we're trying to do this with the back muscles, but the arms press down and draw backwards. So I'm trying to broaden my chest with the um, resistance of the floor with my hands. Bring the hands back a little bit. Lift, broaden the collarbones. Ooh. Lift. I'm just doing these with the breath. Coming down with the exhale, inhale, lift. Ooh. Going all the way back up to the top. Lift. Ooh. Lift. All right, one more. Lift. Oh. All right, so I'm gonna come back 
towards a child's pose. If that seems okay to you, you can do that. If you have another pose in mind, you can do that. Oh. Nice little touchstone pose. So I like mountain pose, child's pose, downward dog, kind of come back to them a couple of times just to sort of feel where they land us. So we'll come back to child's pose again or whatever version you did instead. For now, let's go ahead and take, um, if you can do downward dog, take downward dog. If downward dog is not your jam, you can stay with an all fours position and do some cat shapes um, or some other options standing up if you like. So we're going to take ourselves oh, into one of those options and move a little bit. So whether it's walking in place or moving the spine through some movement or moving the shoulder blades around, give yourself some kind of liquefied <laughs> snaky dogs. Oh, just in time for Halloween. Now, when you've had enough of downward dog, you just walk your hands and feet together. I'm gonna come up halfway or so, and then fold. Now, I'm bending my knees quite a lot so that my um, lower back has a lot of space. <laughs> As I straighten out my legs, I'm gonna to start to feel some intensity on the back of my legs. I might need to lift my torso up a little higher to get the legs all the way straight comfortably. So there's a nice stretch that doesn't feel like it's all of the butt bone. So then I'm gonna turn this into a pose that's just for my back, which is this bent knee position. And then straighter legs, adjusting accordingly. And then one more time. And if you're, you know, took you a while to catch up to here, just do those a few rounds of kind of back and forth here. And then we're gonna come all the way up to standing. <sighs> Give yourself a nice big stretch. And then I'm gonna take myself up to the top of my mat here and put a couple of yoga blocks just nearby so that they're where I need them in the event that I wanna use them. And then I've also, oh, strategically placed a water bottle. <laughs> so if I need a drink of water, it's handy. Every time we come back to Mountain Pose, it's a good time for that. So you can do something similar. All right, turn your toes forward, plant your feet, draw, let the shoulders kind of drop down your back a little bit. So it's not too stiff around the upper back, but we're also relaxing or letting the shoulder blades kind of find a home on the back. Oh, get taller. And just for a moment, just feel Mountain Pose as it is. So as we come back to it, we've got some <laughs> compare and contrast opportunities. Take a nice big breath, there may be a little baby back bend there. Fold forward, come up halfway, exhale, fold. Now we're gonna step back with the left foot and this is gonna take us into a lunge. So right knee over top of the ankle or a little behind it but not past it. Left knee, I'm leaving mine lifted. You can put yours on the ground, okay? So we're gonna shift the hips back and forth. So with both feet, um, or in this position with my, both of my feet, I'm gonna try to get them to the ground. So my heel in the back is not gonna touch the floor. I'm just going as close to that as I can. And then bending the front knee and stretching back into the lunge, I can even lift a little bit to get that a little bit more stretch through the front of that hip, okay? So a little straighter in the legs, sending the feet down. Just trying to get a stretch through my calf muscles, the foot, and then coming back to the lunge. And then one more time, if I had a knee on the ground, I would just be kind of working this hamstring area. And then back to the lunge. We're gonna add a little twist here. So taking the right hand off the floor, turn into the right. Now notice how much your left hip wants to drop. Can you keep the hips a little more steady? Take in one more big breath and then coming back. So I'm going to step back to down dog first. You can go directly to plank if that's a better choice for you. Oh, sometimes 
downward dog is just not a good pose for everybody. So holding or lowering as you like. If you want to hold a little longer, you can. Come into a back bend that feels okay to you. And then back to down dog. And you can also skip those and just hold the standing pose or the dog. I'm gonna take the left leg up, sinking a bit through my right heel, giving that left foot a couple of spins in each direction. And then if you can step it forward, just go as far as it'll go. You can go off to the diagonal as you need, and then step your left foot up, or right foot up to meet your left one. Come up halfway, fold. Come all the way to standing. Give yourself a nice big stretch. And then find that mountain pose again. Trying to find, ooh, now we've done something on one side, we haven't done the other yet. Is there a difference? Nice big breath. Ooh, arms reach up. Maybe there's a little baby back bend. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, come up halfway. So this time we're gonna step back with the right foot, finding the lunge on this side. And again, you can put that knee on the ground if you like a little bit more support. I'm making sure that this knee isn't really past my ankle. So adjusting the space. Then I'm gonna try to get both my feet firmly planted in the floor, even though my right foot is not gonna go there. I'm just trying. <laughs> and then back to the lunge. Lift it up a little as needed to feel that stretch to the front of the hip. And then straightening out the front leg, sending the heel down in the back. And again, if you're kneeling, you might be doing um, just more of a straight front leg, right? Feeling it more in the hamstrings, that's fine. Oh, I feel it everywhere. <laughs> Coming back to the lunge, adding our twist, and just noticing that point where the hip starts to help. There's nothing wrong with the hip helping per se, but if I want more twist in my back, I do less with the hip. Taking one more big breath, and then coming on back. Again, we're gonna step back. I'm gonna go to down dog. You might go directly to plank. Oh. Oh. Noticing the kind of changes that may have occurred. <laughs> Adding in your vinyasa as you like. Oh. And then we're gonna take that right leg up if we're in downward dog, if you're not in downward dog, you can <laughs> try a couple of other things. Spin your foot in a circular pattern there. And then step your right leg forward when it seems right. Bring your left foot up to meet it. Come up halfway. <laughs> Exhale, fold. And come all the way up to standing. Nice big stretch. Oh. And then we'll <sighs> find our way back to mountain pose. The mountain poses just get better and better as time goes on, I say. This feels nice, a little more alive. So we're gonna do a standing balance pose that is um, kind of, could be warrior three, <laughs> could be a standing splits. So um, if you wanna do it as a warrior three pose, then you'll keep your torso more level, parallel to the floor. And if you wanna do a standing splits pose, then you'll fold forward and try to get as close to a forward bend as you can go. They both have merit. <laughs> if you've got tight hamstrings, the warrior three might be better for you. So we're gonna fold, and then my left foot is the one that's coming in the air. So you can use blocks or a piece of furniture to kind of get yourself set up for the warrior three. And with the standing splits, you might either try to grab the leg you're standing on or hold on to the blocks <laughs> or the floor as the case may be. So we're just pausing with one of these balancing poses, whichever one you think is a good one to try today. <laughs> Two more breaths. Ooh, and then we're gonna land, theoretically in warrior one. <laughs> it may not work out just exactly right but we'll fix it. So warrior one takes our high lunge and brings the heel around. So there's gonna be a little bit of a diagonal. As you rotate the ribs forward, there's a little bit different stretch that happens here. Press the feet into the floor. Try to tear the floor in half. 
Bring the arms up. We're going to bring the elbows back, oh, pressing them together, and then push forward. Arms up, elbows back, push forward. One more like that. Oh, it feels nice. Oh, okay. Now, you're going to wrap your arms behind your back. You might lace your fingers together or grab a wrist. I'm going to use a yoga strap. I'll just put it right between my hands. And then we're going to fold forward. So you can fold over this front leg or more to the diagonal, whichever you think is going to work better. And then just see. Again, the shoulder blades come closer together as you try to lift your arms a bit. Oh. A humble warrior or a bowing warrior. So two more breaths here. And then we're gonna release the arms. Now, one more time I'm gonna come into this sort of hamstring stretch territory. I'm gonna pick my back foot up, turn it all the way around. Get as close as I can to hips distance apart with my feet, um, right to left, and then far enough apart that I can get both feet to the ground, but it's a little bit of a stretch through this calf muscle here on the left leg. And then you might fold all the way forward, or only halfway, <laughs> or somewhere in between. But we want the stretch to distribute across the whole right leg, and not just at the sit bone. So lifting the torso is gonna help us with that. So take the torso to whatever point you feel that stretch without it being too much. I'm gonna make mine just a little bit wider. Oh. Good, last breath here. Now, you wanna skip the vinyasa. You have a choice of either downward dog or just stepping forward from here. Um, if you want the vinyasa, you can step back either dog or you can go directly to a plank and then lower through. And then we'll take that left leg up. We're gonna bring it straight down the center, curl up around it, bring it back, straight down the center, curl up, take it back, oh, and then we're gonna step it forward. This might need to go out to the diagonal instead of into the center, wherever you can fit your leg in. Come up halfway and fold, and then all the way up to standing with a nice big stretch. And then back to that mountain pose. And again, using this as kind of a touchstone just to see where we're at. Oh. All right, same thing, other side. So we're gonna take either the warrior three or the standing splits <laughs> or some hybrid <laughs> of the two, depending on how you're hamstrings and or other body parts <laughs> say they want to do this. Could be other <laughs> hips, whatever might be the thing. And I like to sometimes meander between the two and see if I could do both. So two more breaths of whatever we're doing. Maybe we're not even balancing, we're just mostly falling. <laughs> And then we'll step it back into warrior one. Again, adjust your feet as you like. Press the feet down, stretch them out apart, let your hips go with. And then, oh, bring the arms up. Peel them back and push them forward. Oh, some shoulder blade movement. <laughs> All right, so now you're gonna wrap your arms around behind you. If you laced your fingers together last time, Lace them together with a different finger on top. If you grabbed a wrist, grab the opposite wrist. If you, like me, ugh, <laughs> did this work with the strap. I had my palms turned out last time. I'm gonna try to turn them in this time. So just changing it up just a little bit. And then folding in and adjusting. And then just noticing, like, is that causing trouble for my elbow? <laughs> or anything else for that matter. Oh. All right, yogis, keep your feet nice and strong and breathe. Mm. 
one more breath. And then we're gonna release the arms. You can give your arms a little like, oh, shake out <laughs> as you're sort of meandering around into this split leg forward bend. Some people call it pyramid pose. I'm good with either name. <laughs> so we're just finding our way so that the toes mostly point forward. The back foot might turn a little at an angle, that's fine. It's just, it's just our bone structure is all different. Some people's, if you look around, if <laughs> you in a yoga class in the old days, <laughs> when, when we get together in person, um, you would see like everybody's body's a little different. Everybody has different angles. Just do the angles that are right for you. As close as you can get, we're getting a nice even stretch all the way through the legs. And again, for me, the torso is the key, like lifting it up or bringing it down to getting that stretch through the two straight legs. So two more breaths. And then we're gonna take ourselves back to down dog. Now again, you can go directly to plank. Oh. Now we're gonna come down onto the belly. So everyone together, we're all coming all the way down with control, <laughs> if possible. And we're gonna lengthen out, oh, nice and long through the legs. Okay, turn your head to one side, and then you can either rest the hands beside you or lace one together on top of the other um, on your low back. We're gonna straighten the arms out every time. <laughs> So uh, each time we lift, we're gonna reach through the arms. So whether they're clasped together or not might depend on how tight your shoulders are. We're gonna bring the heels in and, and kind of pulse this. It's almost like you're trying to kick yourself in the butt. <laughs> we're gonna do it three times. One, two, three. And then everything comes to locust. So we're gonna lift, draw towards the center line, neck nice and long, coming on back down, cheek turned the other way and then three little pulses. One, two, three, lift and down. One, two, three, lift and down. One, two, three, lift, oh, down. You got the idea, we're doing two more. down okay so now I'm gonna take myself back to child's pose or whatever you used in place of child's pose last time and then just pause for a moment and notice if it's a little bit different this time maybe not <laughs> it is for me it's a little bit friendlier either going back to down dog <laughs> or you're going to get yourself up to the top of the mat in some way that does not involve down dog <laughs> but we're going to take this right leg in the air exhale bring that knee in curl up around it stretch back bring it in curl up stretch back oh, bring it in curl in oh, and then we're going to step it forward bring the other leg up to meet it come up halfway Exhale, fold, and then we'll come all the way up to standing. Oh, give it a nice big stretch. And one more time, we're gonna come back to this mountain pose, just to find that mm, little touchstone. Notice. Okay. So our balance work is on both feet this time. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's better or not, but we're gonna try to lift up onto the balls of the feet, extending up, and then come on back down. Now, I like sweeping my arms up in dramatic motion when I do this, but I've got plants in my way, so <laughs> I'm doing a little bit tighter to the body, but you could do a big wide sweep if you like, and you've got space for it. So lifting and coming down, we're gonna do this three more times, lifting, coming down and when I get to the balls of my feet I'm trying to stretch up through my heels 
So really trying to reach upward and then come on back down. We're gonna take this nice big stretch, but leave the heels down. Exhale, fold forward. Okay, inhale, come up halfway. Now you can either come to a, a narrowing, a narrow squatting pose, a very deep squat, or you can step your left foot back and come to a wider squat. So that's up to you. We're gonna all wind up in the same place. So wider squat means my hips are closer to the height of my knees, maybe a little higher. A lower squat means my hips are below the level of my knees. So depending on your <laughs> anatomy needs, you might have a different choice. Now, see people, some people can go right down to the floor from a squat. They can just sit down onto the floor. I'm gonna take this guy and make it just a little bit bigger do a little half squat in each direction first, and then I'm gonna come down to the floor a little more awkwardly, but I got there just the same. <laughs> so taking ourselves to a seated position, Ooh, you need a little bit of room behind you so there's a little bit of space to rock. Okay, <clears throat> now I don't necessarily want my legs as wide apart as they can go. I want them to be reasonably wide apart <laughs> so that I've got a nice sort of planting purchase on the floor. We're going to bend the knees slightly, sit up nice and tall, and we're going to start with this little twisting action and then come back, one, two, three, then come back. And again, I want this twist to be in my upper middle back. So from about the navel up to the neck is where I want the twist to happen. So if I feel like my hip is coming up off the floor, we're gonna re-ground nicely. That's why we want the legs a little on the wide side. Okay, so sitting up nice and tall. If you want the extra work for your shoulders, have the arms out. One, two, three. There's a tendency sometimes to do this with the arms like that. So be mindful of keeping the arms level with the torso. Two, three, coming back, sit up taller. One, two, three, nice and tall. One, two, three sitting up one two three sitting up one more time the other way one two three so now we're going to do the saw and the saw involves the hamstrings so we want to be mindful of that so we're going to turn towards this right side bring the left arm across towards the right pinky toe in this kind of sawing motion like we're trying to <laughs> saw um, on that little pinky toe with our pinky finger now, <clears throat> again, we're not trying to tear our hamstrings. So if it feels like that motion is tricky, you can simply hold two, three, come back to the center, lift up tall, turn, one, two, three, coming back, turn, one, two, three. It does not matter if you're actually reaching your pinky toe, just reaching in the direction that your arm is in, two, three, because for me, one twist is a little bit deeper than the other. So I get closer to my foot with one side, three. Then on the other side, because I don't have the same range of motion here. One, two, three. We're gonna do it back to the left side one more time. One, two, three, come on back. All right, just for a moment, you can oh, bend your knees a little, give your pelvis a little bit of movement. Now, essentially what we're gonna do, <laughs> is we're gonna do this movement that's just like this. It's the tiniest little bit of twist. Okay, so this is the movement in the torso. It's just like I'm reaching forward to get something, reaching forward to get something. So it's not a full twist, but I'm gonna try to isolate right here on the sides of my waist, okay? I need enough room, because I'm gonna go back as far as I can. So I'm gonna lean forward, reach, reach, reach and then as I'm coming back I'm gonna curl in through that navel and go back as far as I can still reaching reaching and then bring myself back up so if you can go all the way to the ground awesome <laughs> you can go all the way to the ground and come back up but we want this to be a smooth pathway so I'm reaching 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 kind of curl in that belly button in so this is kind of taking us towards that sort of rowing the river sticks um, <laughs> imagery we're gonna use next week, but similar ideas. So we're doing this kind of boat pose with these little, oh, little 
little movements back and forth. So we're gonna do two more. And again, I'm not reaching from my arms, I'm reaching from this point of my abdominals, right? My arms are just helping me extend. <laughs> yeah, as far as I can go, otherwise I'm gonna hit my head on the back of the furniture. <laughs> oh, all right, yogis. So we're gonna go all the way to the ground. I'm gonna turn around <laughs> like this and do it this way. So I'm gonna bend my knees quite a lot for this last one so that I can make it all the way down without causing any trouble for my low back. So all the way down, all the way down, all the way down, all the way down. Oh, I'm trying to do that with control. <laughs> Isn't that easy? <laughs> now that we're down, we're gonna take ourselves onto our side, but first, oh, back massage goodness. <laughs> and then I'm gonna lay on my, I'm gonna lay on my left side. For you, it might be the right. So whatever side you're on, so you can see. <laughs> Hips are stacked. Shoulders are stacked. This front hand can be, our top hand can be up front on your hip or lifted in some fashion. You can lift your legs a little bit if you like, but we're gonna bring the feet around behind. So I like to rest my knee on the floor on the bottom leg, but you can have that slightly elevated. So you have to do a little bit more core work. Keep the hips level though. Try not to let this hip kind of lift a little higher than the other hips. We want the hips to stay nice and level. We're doing all the work from the core here. So um, this part, <laughs> the stabilizing part. We're gonna open the knees and maybe extend the leg out, bring it back and close it up. That is all for the outer hip. Okay, <laughs> so we're working both things at once. So core is holding us steady, lifting a little bit off the floor with that side waist. And then the legs are doing this really great internal external rotation business to help strengthen all these stabilizing muscles in our hip. Let's do three more. Okay, so we're gonna stretch the legs out when you've gotten that third one done. And then we're gonna take the top leg up front in some fashion. So it could just come across a little bit. I like to put the foot on the ground. I just wanna make sure my hip is nice and stable, lift the bottom leg, and we're gonna pulse up 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hold it there and make a circle. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Circle the other direction. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now hold it up. And just hold that leg in the air, squeeze up through the side of your waist a little bit. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Bringing that leg down. We're going to roll onto the back, but leave your right leg across your left leg or whichever one you're doing so that you can bring the legs in. And we'll give ourselves a little kind of pigeony stretch there on that outer hip. Oh, for a few breaths before we do the other side. Mm. Oh. Just be mindful. If your knee gets tricky in this shape, keep your shin bones lined up so that they're not twisting at all. Flex the foot, point the toes exactly in the same direction as the thigh bone is pointing. So if these two line up, then the shin bones will stay a little bit more stable and make your knee more stable. Then you can get to your hip and not your knee. <laughs> Two more breaths here. Maybe three if it's feeling really good, yogis. <laughs> mm. All right, so then I'm gonna bring myself to my opposite side, letting that side go. Oh, I'm gonna swing this all the way around. Oh, you might be able to just roll over. Okay, getting everything lined up, lifting through the sides of the waist, bringing the feet around for the little clams, butterflies. We're gonna take the knees open, extend the leg, bring it back and close it up. Okay, so that's the movement again, holding the torso steady, squeezing the sides of the waist towards each other, and then continuing in a rhythmic and smooth fashion to move the legs <laughs> through this range of motion while we're holding that core in nice and, nice and sleek.
I'm gonna do four more of these yogis. Okay, so that's my fourth one. So when you've gotten yours complete, I'm gonna take the legs out. Just make sure that I like kind of the way everything feels here. Dropping that the top leg up over the stack. And then I'm just keeping my hips nice and stable. Lifting the bottom leg up. We're gonna start with a pulse. 10, nine, eight, just lifting a little higher. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Hold steady there, make a circle. Five, four, three, two, one. Circle in the other direction. One, two, three, four, five. Holding that leg up now, squeeze and lift the bottom side waist for ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. All right, so we're leaving this leg across. We're rolling onto our back. Oh. <laughs> Bring in those legs in to the degree that makes sense to you. Oh. And then just kind of hanging out with this nice little hip stretch we've got going on here. Oh. We are again, yogis. At the start of another week. Oh. All right. I'm going to do about four more breaths. And then, yogis, we're going to kind of stretch ourselves out a little bit. I'm going to do a little flowy bridge. If you would like to do something more like um, a little shoulder stand or a, a partial inversion, like a supported bridge with a block underneath you, you could do something like that instead. We're just easing our way into Shavasana. So this is kind of a nice, to me, it's just a nice little kind of movement pattern of lifting and trying to kind of snake down one vertebrae at a time. It helps. Oh, it just feels good in my back. <laughs> so if I've done anything to make it cranky, this kind of evens it out. And so you can do this movement pattern if you like. You just I just go up as high as it'll go without causing trouble for my neck. And then I come down as close as I can to one vertebrae at a time. Nice and smooth. And today I'm doing a little bit faster, but oh, still trying to feel each of those vertebrae come down. Sometimes that faster rhythm is nice. Sometimes the slower rhythm is nice. Good morning. Oh. <laughs> and then I'm gonna take myself into Shavasana. Now, if you need to split, I get it. Um, <laughs> just leave me a little note in the chat section, so I'll make sure I count everybody at the end. Um, but if you have the time to do this pose, it's so nice for your nervous system to have a moment to sort of let go and interact. Interact? <laughs> That's not the word I'm looking for. Um, <laughs> sort of um, em Integrate, I think that's the word I'm looking for. Integrate all the uh, work that we've been doing and then relax. So our nervous system gets tons and tons of data from our nerves that are in our fascia when we're moving and stretching and doing weird things <laughs> with our body physically. So one of the things that yoga has that maybe other um, ways that people move their body don't is this opportunity for the nervous system to really shift into that parasympathetic state. So that's what this pose is all about, is just to get as calm and peaceful and least amount of movement possible so that there's no sensory data coming to the nervous system now and it can just integrate all the data it's already gotten and shift into a really complete relaxed state. 
And if you haven't had breakfast yet, this is a great <laughs> precursor to breakfast because you'll already be ready to digest uh, all your food. We're not going to go anywhere yet, but just notice your breath again. And let your breath travel through your whole body. See if you can feel it in your fingertips and your toe tips. So we're going to take a nice big breath all the way to the toes. Let go with a big sigh. <sighs> wiggle your fingers and toes and give them a stretch and then wiggle them again. Maybe two more stretches. I don't know. <laughs> However many you need for your fingers and toes to feel nice. And then do some movement with your wrist and ankles. Give yourself a great big full body stretch. And then when you're ready, curl it in. Oh. And we're gonna eventually come to a seated position here. Oh, <laughs> oh goodness. Thank you so much for joining me, yogis. Let's take a big old breath together. Nice big inhale. Big deep sigh. Oh. <laughs> Namaste.